Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to start adding the code for our application. We're building a photo viewing application that will get the images to display from Flickr. Each photo will be a model in the application. We want to keep all of the application's functionality encapsulated and shielded from the global scope. We also want it to be configurable so that you can use it to get your own Flickr pictures easily. So let's make a start by adding the wrapper for the application. So we're defining the constructor for our application as a global variable here. This will be the only one as any other variables we use will be defined within the constructor and will therefore be private. We'd probably namespace the application as well to try and ensure its uniqueness, but we won't worry about that for today. And we can also use the use strict directive because it's best practice to do that. In the accompanying code download, you'll see that the photoapp.js file will be full of JSDoc style commenting. We won't actually be using JSDoc in this example, but it's a really useful and easily readable form of commenting. And I find it useful to use this even if I'm not planning on using JSDoc. So inside our constructor function, after the use strict directive, we first want to set some variables. So the first one is the name of a method. And we also want to store a reference to the application. And by convention, we do that in a variable called that. And that will just be mapped to the this object. We'll be using a lot of private methods in our application. So we declare the first one here as an undefined variable at the top of the outer constructor function. We'll add this method in just a moment. And as we build our app, we'll add more. So we'll need to add their names to this var statement as we go on. So we also want to define some default options for our application. And we can do that using an object literal. So the first option we'll call base, and this will be the first part of the URL that will be used in every single request that we make to Flickr's API. This will always be the same, so it's best to store this as an option. So whichever request we'll make, this base part will always be used, and it will always be the same. And we can also store the image size that we want to get. So this is the image size as denoted by Flickr's API. I don't know what the D actually stands for, but it's the size that we're interested in. So now we need to add an initialization method for our application to perform any setup that needs to be done when the app is invoked. We want this method to be invoked immediately, so we add parentheses around the function and it will be invoked automatically. And so that our application supports basic chaining, we can just return this immediately invoked function. So inside the function, what we want to do is create an options object. And we can do that by combining the defaults object that we've just created with the configuration object that may be passed to the constructor. So we'll set this as a property of the application, hence we attach it to that, which we've already mapped to this. And we'll create this object using jQuery's extend method. And the extend method takes the objects that we'd like to combine as parameters. So the first one is our defaults object, and the next one is the config object. Okay, great, so we've got our constructor function and an init method. We should now be able to invoke instances of our application, and we can do that from the HTML page. And as you can see, I've already prepared this ready. So what we do is create a variable called my photo app and invoke our constructor using the new keyword. And we can pass in a configuration object. The configuration object contains an API key and a photo set ID. So these are both required when interacting with Flickr's API. If you want to use this demo application with your own photo sets, then what you'll need to do is register 
with Flickr's developer API, and that will give you the API key. And once you've added a photo set, the photo set will have an ID. So the photo set that I'm using is a public photo set, so you should be able to view it. And I've just stored the ID and the API key as configurable options here to make it easy to change them. So this should now invoke an instance of our application. So to check that it's working, let's just add a console statement here. Um, and we can log the options object just to check that it's being created correctly. So let's view it in a browser. And if we open up the console, uh, one of my extensions seems to be going crazy. So let me just refresh that. Okay, and you can see that the options object is being logged and we have the base and image size properties that come from the defaults object, as well as the API key and photo set ID that we passed into the constructor. So the options object has been created correctly, which is good. So you can see there's a 404 for this jQuery 2.0.3.min.map file. And the reason why we're seeing this 404 is because Chrome automatically supports source map files. Um, and that makes it easy to develop with minified code. We don't actually need to use this, but because it is specified in recent versions of jQuery, Chrome will automatically try to find it. And as we don't have it, it will throw this 404. We can ignore that, it's fine. It's not actually a problem. If you're really, really concerned about having a 404 here, then you can just go to the jQuery site and download the map file and that will get rid of it. Awesome, so everything's working as expected so far. So the thing about making JSONP requests to Flickr's API is that the response will expect a specifically named global function that it will invoke and pass the data to. All of our code is going to be encapsulated within the outer constructor function that we've just added. So the response won't be able to see this function as it's a private method of our application. So the first method that we'll define will overcome this. And the method that we'll use to do this will be called add window handler. And it's one of the variables that we defined right at the top of our constructor here. So let's add this method now. We can add this directly after these variables. So first of all, inside this function, what we want to do is set some variables. The first one is called a rig method, which is short for original method. And the second one is an object literal called handlers. We're going to want to handle the returned data differently depending on the request that's been made. But we don't want a whole bunch of functionality attached to the window in the global namespace. We want as little as possible. So what we can do is map two different methods within our application. We can add these mappings to the handlers object that we've just added. So the keys in this object will be the names of the methods on Flickr's API that we're using. So the first one is called get info, and what that does is just return some information about the photo set that we're working with. So we'll map this to a method called handle details. And the other request that we'll be making is called flickr.photosets.getphotos. And that will actually return the photos in the photo set that we're working with. So we'll map this to a private method within our application called handle photos. So next we need to check whether there is already an existing function of the required name attached to the window object. If there is, another widget on the page might be using Flickr's API for something else, and we don't want to trample all over that. So we can save the existing function to the arig method variable that we added. So we can say if the window object has a property called JSON Flickr API, We'll just save that to our arig method variable. So when working with Flickr's API, there will always need to be a function attached to the window object called JSON Flickr API. So next we want to actually define our own version of this function. And we can attach it to the window because that's where the callback from the Flickr API will expect it to be. And this function will automatically be passed the data returned by the request. 
So as we've possibly replaced an existing global JSON Flickr API method, and we won't know whether the data that we receive is our data or the data for the replaced method, we need to check that we're getting the data that we expect. So we can do this by comparing the ID of the photo set returned by Flickr to the photo set ID property of our application. So we can say if data dot photo set dot ID is equal to that dot options dot photo set ID, then we can proceed. And all we want to do is invoke one of our handlers. So these handlers are stored in the handlers object. And we won't know which one we're actually going to invoke until we start to make the requests. And the way that we'll tell that is by setting a new property of the options object called method. So we can say that dot options dot method. So that's the method name that we're going to be invoking. And we can just pass it the data that we've received from Flickr. So we may or may not have stored an existing function in the arig method variable. So we need to check whether this variable is defined. And if it is, it's a function. So we can just invoke it and also pass it the data that was received. Great. So now in order to invoke this function, the add window handler function, or method. In order to invoke this method during the initialization of our application, we can just call it directly after we've created the options objects. So we can get rid of this console log statement and let's just add another one and we can just log window.json Flickr API. And we'll just check that it contains the code that we expect it to. So let's go back to the browser now. Let's refresh it. And it's saying that handle details is not defined. And of course it isn't defined. So what we can do to overcome this is just add these method names to our initial variable statement here. So all of the private methods that we add will need to have names added to this variable statement. And we'll add these as we go through the course. And now the window object has a function called JSON Flickr API. And this is what the function consists of. So that's working as expected. So in this lesson, we added a wrapper for our photo app and made it both configurable via an object passed to the constructor as well as chainable. We added a self-invoking initialization method and a public method which can be used to pass the data returned by Flickr to one of our application's private methods. I just want to cover an important part of our application and a powerful part of JavaScript itself, closures. The constructor for our application returns as part of its initialization, but because it returns an inner function, a closure is created. We also added a function that gets attached to the global window object, yet because this, is func yet because this function is defined within the closure, we can still access the private methods inside our application, even though this function will execute in the scope of the window. This is the beauty of closures, and is something we can exploit to make more robust applications, as we've done here. In the next lesson, we can actually make a request to Flickr and get some data to work with. Thanks for watching.